Snipers, you have to see what's happening in the cryptocurrency market this Thursday as Bitcoin's candle low of 31,113 today tells us that we're still seeing sell side pressure right now. And this is not a surprise here. We have this flaggish type of formation forming right now. And we could assume right now that if we don't see any further lows, we could potentially see this move back up to retest 34,788. I want to talk about the potential of that happening or if we're going to see the sell pressure come into the order books as we head into the weekend. And if we're going to see that downside scenario play out, how that's going to look like here at this 28,000 dollar level where we could form this lower low and potentially see a wick below that level. I want to talk about the Bitcoin scenario. Of course, on Thursday, it is one day until traditional markets close. So tomorrow is going to be the last day that we're going to be able to see where institutions are hedging their bets. The DXY is pushing up today, causing the S&P 500 to push down below the previous weekly open. This is a puzzle piece as we head into the weekend because that could affect Bitcoin. You can see here US oil also being affected by the DXY, looking like it wants to come down and test this 50 day moving average. Commodities are a leading indicator for the traditional markets, and that could also translate into a leading indicator for Bitcoin. As we know, Bitcoin has a lot of correlations to the S&P 500. We'll also look at Ethereum. Of course, yesterday we talked about Ethereum not seeing as much strength at this 1980 support. And that's exactly what's happening here. Falling down today with a candle low of 1881. But we've yet to come test 1760. This is the major level. We've already tested it twice. You knock on a door for a fourth time. The likelihood of that breaking becomes very high. Are we going to see this pocket get fulfilled between 1760 and 1440, the previous all time high? That's potentially on the table as we head into the last few weeks until the London hard fork, which is going to be a momentous time for Ethereum on August 4th, 2021. Investors are going to definitely want their allocations and their positions in Ethereum before August 4th. So are we going to be seeing this weekend as the prime entry for Ethereum and maybe some other altcoins? We'll talk about that today. You guys are watching the Snipers channel. My name is Naeem Alabadi. Remember to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, guys. We want to hit 100,000 snipers on this channel. We're already at 45,000, so we're almost there. First, I want to look at Bitcoin on the daily time frame. So right now, we talked about Bitcoin taking the ladder down, but not taking the elevator yet. And that's exactly what we have here. Now, we could assume that we have sort of this flaggish type of pattern forming here after forming this lower low and we saw this move to the upside. We got above 34,708. Now we're seeing this flag pattern. Here's what I'm looking for with Bitcoin. If we see any upside, 34,788 now is exactly where that 50 day moving average is. If we get above that, now we can start assuming that this is the bottom for Bitcoin. We're going to be seeing a reversal and that altcoins at this point are most likely going to even outperform Bitcoin because we didn't drop below 12.2% dominance, which was the market structural support from the 2017 altcoin market high. So this is a scenario on the table. However, the DXY is pushing up. The weekend is coming. That's the most manipulated in the market. And so far, we're below 35,000. We know that the range that we're in brings us to 26,000. Once again, my opinion stands true and it has not changed. Patience is the name of the game while Bitcoin is taking the ladder until we see the elevator get taken. And the only way that's going to happen is at 30,000 US dollars because there's a lot of buy pressure here. So if the order books really want to pressure the bulls, it's going to have to be at the $30,000 level and they're going to have to bring a lot of sell pressure in at 30,000 if they want to break it. Now we'll you know, we'll monitor this $28,000 level. If that's the case, that's going to be the first area that we could potentially assume some support. But the accumulation and distribution says the volume is at 26,000 to 20,000. So if we see a wick to this range, have those orders in. You guys know the game plan for those tuned in in the Snipers channel. Now, here's what we talked about yesterday. All coins have been outperforming Bitcoin because Bitcoin is consolidating. We know that's always what happens. And when Bitcoin formed this higher low on the 26th of June, this was the best opportunity to get into Ethereum when it dropped below 1760. Now we're seeing Ethereum come back down towards that 1760 support. And Bitcoin is also coming back close to this lower high that it formed. Are we going to see Bitcoin potentially test 30,000, form another lower high and then continue further back towards 34,708? 
garnering an opportunity to enter into altcoins, potentially like Ethereum, before seeing an upside scenario, that's on the table. And that's why I want to talk about Ethereum right now, because here's what I'm watching. If we start to see Bitcoin come towards 30,000, it's going to give us the opportunity to test the 1760 support for the fourth time. If we test it for the fourth time as an umpire, I believe it will break. I believe this pocket here until 1440 is the prime opportunity for Ethereum. That's what I'm watching right now. If and until we come to test 1760, I'm going to be waiting because patience is the name of the game when we're taking the ladder down. We want to see the elevator get taken and get that position when the elevator is taken like we did here. The elevator was taken and we immediately saw 30% retracement back to the upside after reaching these lows because it took the elevator, right? So that's what I'm watching for that. With Ethereum to Bitcoin, we're holding this 100 day moving average, but we're sort of just having a cup of coffee. That tells me it's not the final destination. We could see further lows towards 53,000 Satoshis, or we could come back up to test the monthly open. Either way, it's a bullish scenario for the Ethereum to Bitcoin chart. Total cryptocurrency market cap chart, nothing crazy going on, still holding this area near the 200 day moving average. Others dominance doing even better. And that's why if Bitcoin starts to trend back towards 34,788, and it gets above it. It's the first time it's above the 50 day moving average. Now we're talking about a reversal and altcoin dominance has only come down to the previous 2017 resistance acting as support. Now that means that this potential of a higher high or a lower high to form is on the table for altcoin dominance. That would assume all coins are going to outperform Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin dominance also showing some weakness here, sitting below the weekly and monthly open. Now it's Thursday. The DXY is pushing up, causing the S&P 500 to fall. Now, as we head into Friday, we're going to get the final positions of institutions and where they're hedging. I don't want to see the DXY above 92.62 if we don't want to assume any further downside for Bitcoin, such as taking the elevator down because the DXY getting above 90.62 will potentially cause traditional markets and Bitcoin to take the elevator down. So that's something to monitor. We stay below 92.62, 91.92. The scenario of Bitcoin staying between 35,000 and 30,000 and all coins being the play is on the table because this will calm the environment to not see major volatility. We won't see that elevator get taken. And that's the preferred scenario there heading to the weekend. US oil, the leading indicator showing weakness as we predicted here below the weekly and monthly open. That's some food for thought. This is all because of the DXY. So that's what I'm monitoring for Bitcoin. Tomorrow we'll have a very in-depth analysis as we close the week. As always, every Friday, the candles are going to start closing for the traditional markets. Then we head into the weekend, most manipulated for the cryptocurrency market. We need to know the game plan on the weekends. And with that, I appreciate each and every one of you snipers tuned in on our channel. If you want to win principles by Ray Dalio, comment below and smash the like button and you'll have a chance to win. Lee M says dollar cost average. Don't short or long it with leverage. Be smart and use your money wisely. Yeah, well, for those that have been tuned into the snipers channel, we took our Ethereum entry here at 1760 when Bitcoin formed that higher low and that resulted in 30 percent profits. I'm still in that position. I said that was a long term position. It was a swing trade that we took. This wasn't a day trade. And so now that we've come back to test 1980 back inside of this range between 1760, 1980, if we get to 1760, I'm not looking for an entry there anymore since I've already got that entry. That's where I'd potentially want to get further entries lower. And that's why dollar cost averaging in specific areas is really the key, because if you were to dollar cost average at 2300. What's the point of seeing your position come down 30 percent when you could have dollar cost average at 1760 and see your position come up 30 percent? And we're still in profits even amongst these bearish days that we've experienced over the last few days. Right. So dollar cost averaging is certainly the key. And with that, thank you all for tuning in to Cypress channel today. Until next time, snipers.